Nice. So it's good to meet you. I, I want to kick off our conversation with what we've lived through for the last three and a half years, which was surviving a pandemic. And I'm curious how you got through it and how it's changed you. Oh, yeah. Okay. The pandemic. Yeah. So uh, how I got through it. So it's an interesting question. Right before the pandemic hit, um, I uh, when I started my divorce process. So at that time, it would technically be called a separation, I suppose. Yeah. But anyway, I, I started the divorce process. So uh, because of the way that my situation was at that time, I wasn't in a position to get my own place. So I had a buddy that let me uh, essentially stay with him for some time, sleep on his couch, literally. And um, so during the pandemic, I was uh, basically essentially unmarried, away from my two boys, and sleeping on my buddy's couch. <laughs> Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So how 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 is everything now? How did you get through it? Were there silver linings? So how did I get through it? So at that time, I had a lot going on in, in, in my life. But as far as the pandemic is concerned, um, like most of us, I think it gave me a, a reset. And I, I think for many people, at least people that I've spoke with, it was uh, an opportunity to uh, really reflect and uh, kind of look at your life as a whole and look at it in a more, I don't wanna say serious, but look at it from a more um, intentional standpoint. Uh, and my personal experience was I recognized um, that I, A, I made the right decision. It was very, it was tough, but I made the right decision. And B, the reason it was the right decision is because I realized that I had been very unintentional with my life at that up until that point in time. And I was just kind of going with the motions and doing things that I thought I was supposed to do. And I didn't, and I didn't exactly have a vision for my life. And, you know, to be quite honest, I didn't realize that I was supposed to have one, a vision, a purpose, uh, a mission. Um, so going through the pandemic gave me the space to come to that realization and also to start to think about what my vision for my life should be and could be. And then also I started to get into um, uh, men's coaching and start to um, share what I've learned through that process with uh, other men. Cause it occurred to me that other men uh, were going through a similar thing in that they didn't have a vision, a mission and uh, a purpose for their lives. Right. So that's a natural segue into my next question. If I put you in front of a bunch of third graders, it's career day. Mm -hmm. And one of the kids says, Hey, what do you do for a living? How do you answer that child? Uh, I'm a personal trainer, uh, kickboxing coach, and uh, I call it a men's confidence coach. Yeah. So what did you want to be when you were the third grade? What was your dream? Uh, uh, I think in third grade, I think I wanted to be a football star. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Cool. Run back. Yeah. <laughs> did you play football? Uh, I did. I played football a little bit when I was when I was little, and then uh, I played in high school, uh, um, only my senior year for, it just kind of worked out. I would have liked to have played more, but it just worked out. I only played my senior year. Um, so that was fortunate, unfortunate, but I had a great time. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to your roots. Where were you born and raised? What were these seeds that got into you to want to help people now to want to have a focus on fitness? How did all that happen? Um, uh, great question. So it happened by kind of by accident. I was born in, um, Colorado Springs. I was raised as an adolescent, as a young boss. I was raised in Alaska, right? But then, as a um, uh, as a like going into my teens and 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 beyond, Northern California. So uh, my family and I did some bouncing around. But um, my desire for uh, fitness actually came kind of from my interest and desire to get into martial arts. I've loved martial arts ever since. You know, Bruce Lee, Bruce Lee, Roy you know, Return of the Dragon, Enter the Dragon, uh, all these kinds of movies. Uh, I've watched them all, Jet Li, Bruce Lee, Jackie Chan, watched them all, followed them all. But um, so my interest be, uh, in martial arts started at a very young age. Uh, but when I was young, I was, I was mostly interested in sports, basketball, primarily basketball and football. And so martial arts is kind of in the back of my mind. I never took it all that seriously. Um, and so up and through um, grade school, High school, I played every sport I can get my hands on virtually. But then when I got to college, I got to this place where playing sports it was a lot. The the competition level, even if it was intramural, was a lot was a lot higher. 
And also my interest for some of those other sports started to wane because I started to recognize the, the disparity in terms of height, ability, time that you know other kids have put in that I hadn't necessarily put in. So then I thought this would be a great time to start to explore martial arts. So I started, I got, I got involved in, a, I, I explored a couple of few different ones. I went to Cal State Long Beach. Uh, this was like in 1999, if I'm dating myself, okay, don't let the baby face fool you. Okay? <laughs> that's right. Yeah. So, so, uh, so around, that's when I started exploring martial arts and I got to this organization called Shotokan Karate of America. So I started karate, like Daniel's son, like karate kids type, type karate. And I started really just to learn martial arts, how to defend myself when I wanted to be a tough guy kind of a thing. And then slowly, as I started to get better at it, I started competing in tournaments, started doing well in tournaments. And then I thought I uh, did well regionally, nationally, internationally um, in that in that circle, you know. And then I thought um, I should do MMA because MMA was just starting to get to the mainstream around that time, like 2007-ish. Um, so I found a school. I, came, I, I ended up moving back to North Chow, um, ended up having a, my first child, getting married. Um, uh, as a process, started getting into martial arts more seriously. First, it was amateur kickboxing. Then it was amateur mixed martial arts. Then professional mixed martial arts. But this entire time that I was doing martial arts, I was studying fitness on the under, uh, kind of um, on the, uh, as part of my study for martial arts, because I was trying to understand how do I get my body so that I can respond better or be stronger or be more, uh, or be more flexive as I'm doing these martial arts moves. And then one day, as I'm having this journey, I'm visiting my chiropractor who had no, who had who was working on me as I was coming in and out of fights and whatnot. And he asked me how's it how's it going? Just a kind of a regular conversation. And I share with him that you know my regular nine to five isn't looking so hot. You know, I've been working in banks and doing all this kind of random work. You know, trying to use my degree, which I ended up realizing was virtually useless. <laughs> I guess that's a conversation for another time. <laughs> College experience wasn't useless, but my degree to some extent was, or at least it wasn't as useful as I thought. Anyway, so I'm at, he's having this conversation with me and I'm saying, you know, work is just whatever. I'm not really finding anything I'm excited about. And I didn't, you know, really discourage. And he said, why don't you become a personal trainer? So it wasn't my idea. It was my chiropractor's idea. This is like over 10 years ago. And I said, that's silly. Like, because in my mind at that time, personal trainers are just meatheads. But he's like, no, you know, you're, you're a fit guy, you speak well, you do martial arts, people listen to you. And I thought, well, nothing else is working, so why not? So I went and got a weekend certification. I went to a 24-hour fitness near where I was living. They were dragging their feet. So I found this on Craigslist before, while well, Craigslist was still a thing, found this gym in Walnut Creek that was doing boxing, uh, boxing classes, kickboxing classes which I had been doing and learning about as part of my training. I had been leading some. So they're doing offering boxing, kickboxing classes, and you can also do personal training. They no longer exist, but it's called LA Boxing in Wanna Creek. So I went there, did a little as it, uh, audition, got hired, and then from there, I just went. So who's been a hero for you? Who's been an inspiration that's fueled this, this drive that you have in life? Uh, man, I have, a, uh, I have a couple of few. So uh, I have... Um, so some like heroes, so we'll go like heroes with the, with the, uh, heroes of the capital H and like people that I have no access to, but I watch and then we'll go heroes with the, uh, I say, we'll say capital, uh, all cap heroes and all caps. And then heroes with just with a capital H we'll say like that. So heroes and all caps would be people that were fighters like, uh, uh, like Manny Pacquiao or the Oda Machida or Anderson Silva or, uh, Muhammad Ali or Mike Tyson, like. You know, people that really kind of give me an, 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 a glimpse of what it means to be a hero in that right, in terms of martial arts uh, and in terms of carrying the the mantle, so to speak, right? Um, you know, Michael Jai White, Wesley Snipes, you know, these are the people that I, I really followed and looked up to over the years. Of course, Bruce Lee, Jackie Chan, Jet Li. Um, but then, Donnie Yen, but then, um, so those are heroes, all, all caps, but then heroes, people that I, have, I, I had some access to with the capital H were people like Bedros Kulian, who uh, is a, a huge fitness influencer. He's actually way beyond fitness influencer at this point. He's more like a business mogul, but he started in fitness and I've been to his masterminds and I went to a lot of his uh, programs over the years that helped me build my fitness business. Um, Funk Roberts is another one uh, who's a, 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 like a mentor of mine. I had a chance to be on his podcast as well um, uh, earlier, a, a couple months ago. Um, 
Um, so that's another mentor of mine. Oh, I'm sorry, excuse me. I, I apologize. Not right. expecting. Um, yes, am I back? Oh, wait, we're back. Sorry about that. No, it's all good. Anyway, so um, so Pedro's Coolian, Funk Roberts, um, and there's, uh, I'm sure, several others that I can't necessarily remember right now, but those are the kinds of people that have helped in one way or another guide my career, either in terms of fighting or in fitness. So if you can meet anybody alive on the planet right now and spend some time with them, who would it be? Uh, I could spend some time with anybody. Um, first, uh, probably five names come to jump to mind. Uh, I've always been curious what's going on in the mind of uh, Jay-Z because he's been able to do things in music that, um, well, no, really almost nobody else has been able to do. Matter of fact, anybody else has been able to do things in music that Jay-Z done, Jay-Z probably helped him. <laughs> right. So, yeah. So I've always, I've been, I've been curious what's going on in his mind. He, when, he, when he interviews, he, he seems like he's, he's speaking in a way where he might be dropping some clues, but he's maybe giving you like, I don't know, 10, 15% of the game, right? And I could be wrong, but I just feel like there's a lot going on in his brain that he hardly yeah. appreciates. Uh, so that's one person. Uh, another person would be uh, Chris Walk. I'd be, I'd be interested in what's going on in his mind, considering what he went through a couple of years ago. And just not only how he sees um, the, the entertainment industry, but I'd be curious to know, because I've always felt, thought he's a super intelligent, what he, how he views uh, the United States as a whole, especially in terms of related, male and female relationships. Um, uh, I would love to uh, get in front of uh, Bezos, Bezos Koulian personally again uh, to be able to uh, ask him some questions about some things. I'd love to spend some time with Funk Roberts in person to just to be able to work out, ask him some things. Uh, and then last but not least would probably be, you know, uh, I'd be interested to spend some time with Barack Obama yeah. to ask him what, how he feels about his presidency looking back on it and if there are any things that he would have done differently, how he feels about uh, the African-American community and the direction of it, and how he feels about the direction of the nation as a whole. Yeah, that would be a good one for sure. Yeah. So what is your motivation every day? What gets you out of bed? What gets you motivated to accomplish what you want to get done and to be you every day? Well, that's a great question, man. That's like, um, that's, I think every man wants to be able to answer. So yeah. <laughs> I'll soak it in for a second. But um, so um, there's like a few different ways I can answer this, but the, but the most honest way, it might be the cheesiest also is my voice. Yeah. So when I was going through my difficulty with the separation divorce, there's a lot of other, I want to say ups and downs, but really mostly downs that came with it at that point in time. Uh, I lost a lot of friends for no apparent reason. They just decided to take sides. And I never did anything to that other person, my, my ex. I never did anything that I thought would warrant that. I didn't run around on her. I didn't, you know, uh, but uh, people decided to take sides, you know, for whatever reason. Uh, so uh, so I lost a lot of friends. I lost contact with some of my family. And just a lot of, I was taking a lot of L's, taking a lot of L's all at once, it seemed like. And there was a point where I got really low and I, need, and I realized I needed to anchor myself. I started having some really dark thoughts, really difficult times. And I realized I needed to, um, anchor myself back to essentially this reality is what I call it. So, um, so my voice became my anchor. So what I, I decided that, um, I decided that I needed my, my, I was going to become not only, uh, I was going to come out of this, not only come out of this and get even, but I was going to, and by even, I mean, get back to even for myself. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was going to come out of that situation and become a better man than I had been going in. I always, I decided I was, I was going to go, I was going to become a better man than they had ever seen before. And that was in large part for them. And it was a large part inspired by them. So my boys are my, were my first anchor. And then once I got anchored back to, okay, this is your situation. This is where you're at. You put yourself here. What are the steps to get yourself out? Then I, then I connected to a purpose. So my boys are my anchor. And then I decided on what my purpose is going to be. And then over time, I started to define what that purpose was going to look like. So that's how, um, so I, I think that answers your question. Yes, yeah, that, that definitely answers it. So, yeah. yeah, for sure. So what's been one of your best success stories with a client? Oh, my best success story with a client. So, um, man, um, I feel like I have a couple. I, I, I don't, <laughs> so my clients, um, man, I, I have, I have, I have a few, I have a few that, 
really hit close to home, but I'm trying to think of. So I had, I had a client that um, yeah, I'm, I'm, trying, I'm, I'm debating if I, if I, how much I want to share because I there's some clients that I have that I'm that I have to protect there. Yeah, I I get that for sure. Yeah. yeah. So uh, so I guess I'll I'll go with um. Uh, oh, I'll go with this one. I'll go with this one. So I have a young man that I, that I started training about a year ago, matter of fact, and I learned of him through up here, uh, another uh, a trainer, a young lady named Fran, uh, who's a friend of mine who operates more on the Pilates side of things. Uh, she's a great, she's a great woman. She's older, but we've worked side by side. And so, and we've kept in touch. We, our careers are, are she works, we worked in different places, but we've kept in touch. Anyway, she knows people. She'll, she referred me to this young man. Um, who is a friend of one of her former clients. Uh, I'm sorry, who's the son of one of her former clients. So I contacted the young man and we started training. And it turns out this young man has um, certain levels of, of anxiety that he's been working through with a, with a professional. And also, you know, he wasn't very happy about how his, his body looked and his weight. So uh, I put him on a program of weightlifting, essentially lifting and boxing, right? Because, uh, again, I'm a kickboxing coach, right? Lifting and boxing, you know, and I, and over time, uh, his his mother has been telling me, uh, has told me at different moments, um, how proud she is of his progress, just here and there. But we had his mother and I had one conversation, and she said to me, I just thought about the house because I, I trained him at the house. She said to me, "I'm so happy about how uh, my uh, about how my son is, is is doing. I can see that the boxing and the training you've done with him, and just how he's been is." Really brought him out of his shell. His shell. He has a whole new confidence, a whole new way about how he carries himself. He's happier. He's lighter. He looks great. And then she, she also made sure to say, she also made sure to say, now this isn't all you because he has other people he's working with. <laughs> so, you know, she said this isn't all you, but you have a part of us. So thank you for yes, I had, <laughs> I I figured that out. But thank you for making it clear. Anyway. But when I see him, when I see him now, you know, we have great conversation. He has kind of a, an old soul. So I can talk to him almost like we're peers in a sense. But I'm excited to, I'm happy to see how he's come out of the show, how he's appreciating not only how his body looks, but he's growing an appreciation for what his body can do. And that's one of the main things I want to try to, uh, that's one of the main things I try to kind of convey to all my clients. Yeah, we start with looks, we start with body fat, and that's how I sell you. That's how I get you in. But really, we're, we're exploring what your body can do. And as we explore what your body can do, we actually start exploring what your mind can do, what your heart can do. We actually start exploring what you as a person are capable of. And that's a whole nother conversation. That's a whole nother thing that, kind of, that people start to realize. Like, oh, wow, I am capable of so much more. I have so much more strength. I have so much more resilience. I have so much more energy. I have so much more uh, capacity than I ever realized, right? Yeah. So it gives them this kind of like this kind of rising feeling that uh, that was in there. It was, it was there the whole time. Right. And there are different ways to kind of attack. There's different ways to kind of uh, ignite that. But fitness, specifically boxing, I've seen over and over again. But fitness happens to be one of them that helps them be like, oh, wait, I am capable of so much more. I don't have to play small. I don't have to be. I don't have to be meek. I don't have to be quiet. I can be I can be what. I can do whatever I want, what I want to be. You know, they start to have these, mm -hmm. you can kind of watch them start to have these kind of epiphanies almost, right? So, um, so I've seen that with different people, but he's the, the the latest, greatest case. So what's been the best advice you've ever gotten? Uh, the best advice I've ever gotten was, um, I have a mentor um, who's uh, very successful in his own right uh, by the name of Conrad, Conrad Vial. And he has given me a, a ton of great lines and advice but one of the things is he says, I think he said this is from Winston Churchill, but he said, victory is not, he told me, uh, victory is not um, the absence of defeat. Victory is the defeat of defeat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's great. That's yeah, really yeah. Great. yeah. Yeah. So everyone out there has a perception of you, family, friends, clients, colleagues, but you run mm -hmm. the show. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? That's a really good question. Um, had I not had a, a purpose, this would be a lot, lot harder to answer. But it is still challenging because, uh, you know, because there's there's evolutions and then there's changes and you always have to kind of match where you're going with 
Is that in alignment with who you have decided to be? And if it is not, is that okay? Are you evolving? Are you evolving closer to what your what you feel your ideal is, or are you evolving away from it? Right. So it's a constantly ever changing thing. But that said, um, I would say that uh, I'm a father. I'm sure I'll be a future husband, uh, a loving father, a devoted future husband, and um, uh, a child of God. Uh, and um, what I would call, um, you know, this might be a little woo woo, uh, but you know, you asked, so here it goes. Yeah. But uh, I carry the light, right? Uh, and I carry the light as a, as a warrior, right? My 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 personality, my perspective, as I see myself, is um, I'm a I'm a fighter. I'm a natural. I'm a natural warrior, but I'm not a warrior in terms of like violence more. I'm a warrior in terms of like, uh, I'm constantly, I have my own kind of demons or negativity that I'm fighting. And as I find ways to be more successful at that, I share those ways with people that I come into contact with, whether it's in the kickboxing world, my kickboxing class or my clients or my friends or my boys. I share those things so that they can be warriors of the light as well. Because yeah. just carrying the light, just being the light isn't enough. You actually have to fight back the darkness. Yeah. You actually have to fight it back. You have to keep it at bay. You know, it's like being it's like being Batman. The best men, in my, in my opinion, are men that carry the light, but they understand the darkness. And they have a little darkness, right? You have to have a little darkness to be a warrior. But you don't submit to the darkness, right? Yeah. So that's what it means to be a warrior of the light. So you you fight the darkness back. So that way you can carry the light to the next person. You show them how to fight back the darkness. It's always going to be there. There's always an element of there. And sometimes you'll lose. But if you have the tools, if you have the, if you have the self-awareness, if you have the physical, mental, emotional capacity and the resiliency to fight back the darkness, you can continue to present yourself as the light. And as you do, other people will start to see that. Be, oh, I want to carry that light. Carrying the light is great, but it's not just carrying it. You have to actually fight back the darkness as well. Yeah. So if anyone out there wants to hire you, learn more about you, anything about your world, where's the best place to go? Great question. Uh, so I have my own website, uh, www.jeremydmurphy.com. And I invite you to go to backslash fight back. I have a fight back online course that I created. And again, fight back is an acronym for uh, faith inventory, growth, habits, and team. And this is my framework to help men fight back against depression or fight back against um, the uh, the difficulties of going through a divorce or fight back against the trauma and depression that goes through that comes with losing a loved one or anything that that really brings a man that brings kind of feels like it brings a man da down to his knees again this is a framework uh, a course that I created that you can use to help you be a warrior of light fight back the darkness so you can carry the light so you can find me uh, on my website I'm also uh, very active on uh, Facebook you know the whole Facebook forward slash Jeremy D Murphy um, LinkedIn as well, LinkedIn forward slash in forward slash Jeremy D. Murphy. So LinkedIn and Facebook are the places I'm most active. I have some other stuff here and there, but it's not that all that interesting to me. And I invite people, if they're interested, I just started uh, uh, I just started another program where it's more interactive um, and it's called Reclaim Your Masculine Frame. You go to my Facebook, you message me frame, I'll send you the details to see if you're a good fit. I like it. I love the lion back there. Jeremy, thank you so much. I appreciate your story, your passion. Best of luck with everything, man. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. I appreciate it.